The following podcast contains adult language and themes. So don't say we didn't fucking warn you. You're listening to Sarah Talk. It's political. If you really give a fuck about the life of the unborn, you'd better be prepared to help fund WIC and food stamps and welfare because you don't get to say, I care about that life until it's born and then turn around and say, well, you shouldn't have had sex if you couldn't care for this child. You should have gotten a better education. You need to work harder. Maybe you should take a second job. It's not my responsibility. Critical. When was the last time a Christian was allowed to have a separate place to say their prayers? Look, you can literally bow your head at your fucking desk. You're like, why did he get the thing and I didn't get the thing? You didn't ask for the thing! And positively, LGBT positive. Look, and whenever there's someone coming after my community, they are either wearing a MAGA hat, carrying a Bible, or more often both. Oh, and occasionally, completely absurd. What the hell is an item? Potatoes. Anyway? You could take a drill, drill you a hole a in a potato, potato and fuck and a potato. Fine. Would you marry a potato, though? Would that, could that be okay? No, but you wouldn't have to marry a potato because a potato doesn't need consent for you to fuck it. And now, from Haines City, Florida, your host, Sarah Austin. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Sarah Talk. Hello. Now in digital. So Dan wants to know why we're starting early. Uh, because we're tired. It's Friday the 13th. For a change, the little one was out in like five minutes. Yep. So it's crazy around here. <laughs> full moon Friday the 13th, right? It is right? a full or moon. Harvest it's moon a harvest or moon, yes. Yeah. Glad <sighs> I'm not superstitious. Right? I know. Ooh. And it's funny because I thought about that while we were driving oh. earlier today. Jeff says, happy Friday the 13th, harvest moon. Yeah. There you go. And you were like, oh, wow, it's so much better than it usually is. And I thought, oh. <laughs> when did I, what? This morning when we were driving back from the mechanic. Oh. It was a little later than you normally are driving home. And uh, you, yeah, you the, made a comment the about the traffic not being as bad as it has been. Yep. And I, that was the first thing I thought of, that that was odd for a full moon Friday the 13th. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, Dan, you'll be happy we're finally getting solar put on our house yes, they're gonna come are. out and do a site survey tomorrow i'm we so excited signed all the paperwork and did all that stuff uh it'll be very nice hey um before we get too far into all of that this is all brand new equipment so yeah. if uh if things sound funky let us know if um if it sounds different that's why um yeah yeah so uh, I mentioned this when I was testing earlier, but I'll I'll say it again for the sake of the podcast. Um, so what we did was I went from an analog mixer to a digital mixer. It looks really cool. It's really sweet. I mean, you can kind of see it there on the yeah. corner of the uh, corner of the screen. Um, so so that gets rid of the physical mixer on the desk. Gives her more room for which, her rum, which will free up some space. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we can move a lot of this stuff around. Yeah. The stuff that you can't see that we've hidden from yeah. from view. Um, uh, but it also has all of the onboard processing that I have been doing in a chain with separate devices. So uh, now I have all of these things that. Yeah. If you need a microphone processor, let me know. Um, Dan Dan I'm, says I'm his use for it. power bill has been $0 for three months now, which I think is amazing in the middle of summer in Arizona. Yeah, right? That's awesome. Right. So, uh, We're hoping for good things here. Um, but Solar is such a weird thing because it's like buying a car. It's like buying a used car. <laughs> because the person, I mean, first of all, it's like buying a used car from a Jehovah's Witness. Oh, God. They <laughs> knock on your door. Okay? Yeah, they do. <laughs> the first thing they do is knock on your door and bug the shit out of you. Uh, is now a good time? No, now's really not a good time. I'm trying to, you know, put dinner and the kids to bed and all this. Well, it'll only take a few minutes. Fuck you, I said it wasn't a good time. Yeah. True story. That actually happened. <laughs> um, so they do that first. They do the, uh, the field service. And then, uh... <laughs> uh oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> And then it's a sales pitch. It's the same, you know, everybody, it doesn't matter what company you have come out. They're going to mm -hmm. talk shit about the other companies and talk about yep. how, you know, we really value our customers we're the best. and we're the best and our equipment is so much yeah. better and our installers are in-house and they're not third party right. and all of, they all tell you the same shit. 
And we've done it twice now. Yep. We've had two people come in and give and, the same spiel for two different companies. It's very much similar. It there's a lot of similarities. Uh, I just think it's interesting. It's funny. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so then we decided to go ahead and do it. And I understand why they design the systems the way that they do, but I have questions. Right. So they design your system for like the minimum amount of hardware that you would need to, in theory, cancel out what you're paying the power company for. Right. right? So based on all they do is run your last 12 months usage mm-hmm. and build you a system that should take care of what you used over the last year. Right. Don't know if you've noticed or not, but the earth is warming. So in five years, ten years, when uh, my air conditioner is going to have to work extra hard uh, because people aren't fixing the fucking problem, am I going to need more panels? Am I going to, like, how does that work? And now I'm in the middle of a contract on the system that I have on there. Like, that's the kind of stuff I have questions Mm -hmm, about. Sure. You know? And, And that's the kind of questions these guys don't have answers for because... That's not the way their company, like, they're they're not there. I don't know, it's so funny. Right. Because if you want to stump a solar guy, <laughs> ask them that exact question. Well, and um, <laughs> so that was the, that was one thing. And then it was, I, 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 again, I understand they're trying to keep the, the costs down because it's an expensive thing. Like, it, it I get right. it, <laughs> right? Um, but at the same time, and I also know that the power companies uh, are very much against Sarah's idea. But at the same time, um, shouldn't I just cover my whole fucking house in solar? I mean, we have the perfect <laughs> roof for solar. We really do. It's full sun all day. There's no trees anywhere nearby. There's no trees that are going to grow up right. over our house anytime, anytime, anytime soon. Oh, yeah. Uh, in the next 10, 15, 20 years even there just yeah. there's no trees like that um so we have a a perfect roof why do we not cover it and then sell back the excess power that we generate mm-hmm. back onto the grid and i know the answer is because duke energy doesn't want to pay us for that <laughs> <laughs> and the solar installer is trying to make the system inexpensive so that you can right. you're not, so that you're not paying more per month than you're paying right now right. i get it i get all of that I'm just, I think longer than next month, I guess. I agree with you. I think it's bullshit that it's not done that way. I think every federal building, every school Mm -hmm, building mm -hmm. should have solar panels on it. There there should not be a school that's built. Mm -hmm. If it's been built within the last five years, there's no reason to not put solar on it. If it's being built right now, there's no reason to not, to not put I've solar I've said on that it. before about residential. Yeah. Change the building code. Right. That says all new construction yeah. must I mean, have blah, so, blah, blah. So, like when Andrew hit Florida, mm-hmm. they changed the building code. Right. So that all windows, or your house had to meet certain codes, right? And that was like a product of natural disasters, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, I just think like... We know what's happening to the Earth. The scientists have come out and said it's going to keep getting hotter. It's going to keep getting warmer. Um, you know, we know that solar is a uh, green energy. Yep. Why can't we change our building codes right. to reflect what's changing in nature? Yep. That's what I'm saying. Like it, it makes sense. I just don't mm-hmm. understand. I don't know. Right. And, and, I mean, I guess that kind of leads me into the conversation that I want to have here about um, uh, about the Democratic debate, which you haven't watched yet. Um, I fell asleep. I'm I, sorry. I thought about flipping it on and watching it for the thing tonight, mm-hmm. but it's like two hours long, and I am, no. I'm not about that. Uh, and that is, you know, there's all this talk about, you know, we're going we're gonna to invest in green energy and... Yeah. All of this stuff, and um, I want to hear some more details. Like, what kind of green energy? What's your plan for that? Yeah. Because if what you mean is we're going to give, um, we're going to give uh, some benefits, some tax breaks, some whatever, 
to Duke Energy so that they can go build giant solar yeah. farms. That's not what I want. Right. I want to decentralize the power system. Yeah. I want to make it so that the that the power generation is distributed, yeah. which is a better model, by the way, for, right. for the operation of power in a system like we use it uh, than to have one giant mass-producing generator that then feeds out into the grid. Now, um, well. Yeah, go ahead. Dan says, we have a covered parking in Arizona which has solar panels on them. Yeah, um, Legoland. Legoland. That here. And that's not Duke, I that's found it. out. That's Tico. Yeah, right. And Tico's out. Yeah, of, they're in what, a different... Tampa. Yeah. So, but yeah, they're covered parking. It, it's their um, their disability parking lot and their premium parking lot. You pay for covered parking and it's solar panels. Uh -huh. um, and I think that's amazing. I think any parking, any parking lot, if they're yep. smart about it, nobody likes parking in the dark sun. Anytime we, you build a parking lot, you just put solar panels We up. just built three garages at Disney Springs, and I said, well, this is dumb. Nobody wants to park on, on the top level. No. Nobody wants to park put up in the sun. Put some panels up there. Exactly. Throw you, some panels up and, there. And, you know, then people won't mind parking there, and you're generating electricity. Everybody yep. wins. It's a, it's, it's a no-brainer. It yep. really is. Um, continuing down chat. David says California does require solar on new construction. Well, California is ahead of everywhere. But that's yeah, and and it it's surprising to me because we're the sunshine state state. Right. Like why if anyone should have it. Why didn't it start here? <laughs> I, I don't know. I know it rains like eight, Republicans. eight oh, days sorry. a week a during the summer. Uh -huh. <laughs> but even like a friend of ours that just got solar put in, she said her first bill um, even though it was like raining every day, it she it still like cut her her first bill in half. Like it was like not connected the whole month, and, but it's still even with the rain, it was still generating enough power to cut her bill, her first bill in half. Uh, yes, David, I agree. Disney should have solar over all of their parking lots. Katie says F, her FPL bill is one seventy six. And it's four days late. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, about what ours was last month. Um. Oh man, Something two like room that. condo. Shit. What are you paying? What that like? What yeah. are you paying for? Right. Yeah. It, well, FPL. I don't know. We had FPL like back where I'm from, and I've heard a lot of things now. Like in yeah. that. I, oh man, really? Like. Well. I, that's, but I think it's just any. It's another one of those things. It's a it. They have allowed these companies to operate monopolies under the guise of, you know, territory uh, distribution, and so just like so, where we live is right between Orlando and Tampa. We all, everyone who lives in this area, works in the Orlando area. Yeah. Everyone we know, everyone yeah. who lives around here. None of us drive to Tampa for anything. No. But if you sign up for cable in Polk County, you get Tampa news and weather. It's the Tampa. It's uh, so stupid. Uh, it's the it's district just or whatever. Like region. Region. Yeah. And it's bullshit. It's <laughs> stupid. It's a fucking monopoly. Yeah. Period. There's. I, like I feel like you should be able to turn on the TV. Like because here's the thing, if. I'm on my phone on the internet and my GPS is enabled and I drive by a Dunkin' Donuts and my Waze is activated. Uh huh. It says Dunkin' Donuts. Here's what's going on. Like, my GPS knows where I am. Why doesn't my <laughs> TV right. cable provider know where I am and just pick up the. Yeah. Like, it's, it's markets. It's not. It's all markets. And it's and not it's... a difficult thing. Like, the cell phones <laughs> have it figured out. Right. But the, the my point there is that the power companies are the same way. If you live at this address, it's Duke Energy. If you move to 10 blocks that yeah. way, it's... Uh, what was the last one we had? God, I don't even remember. That was That's crazy. That How is long crazy. ago that's been. Katie, I'm so, I am so sorry. Your bill is more than ours for a two-bedroom condo, and ours, we have, we have a four-bedroom house. <laughs> FPL is screwing you. Progress energy is progress who we had energy. Before. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, it wasn't very progressive. Yeah. So, 
the the sooner that we uh, that that more people put in solar, uh, the better, obviously. Yeah. And you know, yeah, you still got to pay the ten dollar connect fee or whatever every month. Um, I feel like that's just. But again, if you're generating more than you're using, and that rolls back right into the grid, then you get that back. Like you're yeah. still paying your ten dollar connect right. fee or whatever, but. And I don't, I don't think I mind that so much. Like I feel like no, especially with the system that we're getting. Right. Like I feel like it's kind of pay to play. Mm-hmm. You know, like I want to drive a car on the roads, so I have to have my insurance. I have to make, you know, like um. Right. I feel like it shouldn't be the electric company that benefits from the it. The electric company. <laughs> Like I feel almost like I that should be a tax thing. I should, like I should be able to pay that in a, like a tax. Like I would pay the ha- city of Haines City mm-hmm. the ten dollars to have my electric connected to, like because it's not it's not really it's a utility. It's more like to me I it think of it as a, a utility. It should be a governmental thing, just like trash pickup. Right. Yeah. Because it's it's not like you you require electricity to live. You you need water, so water's uh, like y- you know what I mean. I I just I hate that the power companies have mm-hmm. taken the, over this thing and they're making millions and millions and millions of dollars mm-hmm. on something that people need. Yep, and they can just jack the price up just because they feel like it. And they do. And people like li- like, well, I can't pay this, and now what am I supposed to do? Mm-hmm. I literally have to choose whether or not we're going to have electricity tonight. Or dinner. Or dinner. Dan says, if it's like mine, you'll get an annual settlement to pay you for any excess you contributed to the grid. Yeah, so it's um, net metered. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Uh, where So our system will not have a battery, which sucks for you know when the hurricane comes through and we don't have power for 10 days. Um, <clears throat> because it has to be connected to the grid, anytime they take down uh, our section of the grid, then it shuts our power, our right. solar production down too because our solar system will be feeding back to the grid. So right. for the safety of the workers, blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right? And and that's also, you know, we cannot be off-grid. They don't allow you to just completely disconnect from the power company right. and, uh, and just produce your own power, which is... Uh, theft um <laughs> where's my fucking freedoms you and can, you can go out in the middle of the uh, yeah n- uh, anyway <laughs> uh it would be in the middle of africa what are you getting ready to say uh, the desert there's, here there's, there's places there's... in america where people have gone completely off of the grid and they've built their own solar systems and they've built their own houses. And they and live they... five hours away from anything. Exactly. Right. So that's the We're price you pay that. for convenience. So, um, $10. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, there's no battery. So basically uh, what we generate during sun hours rolls the meter backwards, if what we're using off of our own system. And then uh, once the sun goes down, it switches off back to the grid and then we take power back from right. the electric company and and you just hope like hell that it all evens out in the end and if it doesn't they didn't sell you enough panels yeah if it does and you produce more than you right. use then you get some money back but anyway mm-hmm. oh dan's uh dan says your home will not use any of the power you generate it g- all goes to the grid which is countered by the amount you pull from the power company's grid okay. yeah six one half dozen the other same yeah. same diff uh okay so <sighs> let's talk about the debate that you haven't seen then okay the uh, debate that i fell asleep in dan said the debate last night was heavy on attacks but light on details yeah and I, you know i this is the third debate we started out with 20 too many people 20 too many people <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, so we're yeah. on, we're on the third debate. There was ten of them. There's ten this time that qualified. Right. There's still twelve, Define, or fourteen, or whatever that qualify. Qualify. Yeah, you have to like rate in so many polls, and you have to raise a certain number of 
whatever. They, they need to um have a litmus test for <laughs> how how um how much you actually know about the world we live in right now. The crazy thing about <laughs> about this is I I I feel is that you go like when you look at the comments on the live videos from the debate or whatever like if you watch it on Facebook live um which I did part of there are so many people on there that are just like bitching and complaining about you know like who let these clowns up here and all of this stuff and like I get a lot of that's russian trolls um but <laughs> <laughs> and and Republicans that are sneaking in mm-hmm. trying to yeah, be, sure. you know pains in the ass, but um, but there there are certainly some Democrats who feel that way too. And like, let me just say again, there is no perfect candidate. There right? never will be. Perfect is the enemy of the good, right? We have some damn good candidates. Yeah. And I don't know what more you expect with twenty two people running. Uh, that you're not going to get somebody that's half decent. Right. Okay? Um, so, there were a couple of things that, not necessarily debate-specific, that I wanted to talk about, too. That I've been posting some... St- I've been extra snarky lately. Yeah, I on noticed. On social media. Oh, oh, oh. Itch. <laughs> Specifically on social media. Um, Me and, too. <laughs> and people don't uh, people don't seem to get my snark when uh, when I get that way, and they they take things the wrong way, and and or take everything too seriously, or stuff maybe like that. you should do like instead of like text messages, do videos, do videos. Hmm. Maybe. I mean, usually maybe. my thoughts are so short. In yeah. It's That's it's okay. It's been one liners lately. It's okay. You like could, you could do one liners, just a quick fucking baby boomers. Head. I mean, you know. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um <laughs> so be careful. There might be baby boomers re- in the chat. <laughs> remind me to come back to this one. Oh, okay. Um the question. Yeah, yes. And if there are baby boomers in the <laughs> chat, great. Good. Welcome. <laughs> I have a clarification of my message. For you. Ooh, watch out. Pay attention. Well, here's the thing. So, first of all, uh, I want to settle this argument, this stupid comments people are making about, uh, you know, uh, being old and running for president. And I say that because the people who pull that are often saying, I like Bernie Sanders, but fuck, he's old. That's usually the context that, right. at which it comes. It's like, yeah. God, Bernie's just an old dude, and he's just, he's old. He's just, he's old, right? Well, that's the only thing you have against him. Like, elect him. Right. Um, Listen, my grandma was old, but she was pretty cool. But <laughs> here's the thing. Old age is not the the sole metric for competent or able or... Yeah. Uh, faculty and yeah. so when I talk about old people that shouldn't be running for office I'm talking about people like Joe Biden who wants to turn on the radio or the record player or the TV <laughs> or I don't know is what is it a phone <laughs> so that the kids can listen to words being said because that will improve their situation and fix racism in America that's <laughs> Basically what he said last night. And God bless him. Some of my friends that I, you know, follow in their live tweets and posts and yeah. stuff. And you know, Biden started off pretty good. And then he just like the the later it got, the just the more he the, needed to go to bed. Yeah. Well, but not even like he didn't <laughs> um, he, he didn't sort of like calm down towards the end like you know what i mean like it didn't get like sleepy joe right and then just kind of yeah peter off and he got like even more energy and weird <sighs> because of it like, i need to really need to go back and watch you do this was an entertaining like one. i was listening to it but it, yeah the kid wanted to snuggle and uh, so he was in between us and i was just i gave up because i couldn't hear and he was making noise and 
So I laid there and listened to it for a while, but then I just fell asleep because I got tired of trying to listen over. Right. But to Dan's point, there, there, the the substance was low. But also, I feel like at this point, I got a pretty good beat on who's wh- doing what and, you know, what their policy right. plans and that sort of I stuff are. I still didn't even recognize half of the people up there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, like, um, that reminds me to write down another one mm. that I wanted to talk about. Um, so, but yeah, like I, at this point, I'm not expecting a lot of change. Like you, it, it, you get to a point where people have pretty much decided who they're going to support. Right. And, and I, I don't know if they're using polling to sort of determine, like if people are clicking undecided in those polls. When I do these polls, there no, there's no undecided is not an option. It's yeah. if you had to vote today, out of these 10 people, who would you vote right. for? And then the next question is, let's say that person didn't get in, then who's your next pick? Right. Right, and it does three or four or five of those. Yeah. Um, but there's never a, well, oh, I'm an undecided voter. I don't really know what I'm going to do. That's not an option on the polls. Like, at least the ones that they send me emails to do. Um I don't know. I just, I feel like, and maybe this is some of my own bias coming in, but uh, I have a pretty good idea of what I will, uh, what I want to do. Um, but, yeah, you know, but also I've come into this with the idea that, you know, if, if Marianne Williamson squats down and shoots a jade egg out of her vagina and the jade oh. egg becomes the Democratic nominee, I'll vote for the jade egg got to be better than a mango with a sunburn anything literally anything um so i have been posting a lot lately criticism of baby boomers on the facebook and uh and people are taking uh taking that a little too seriously taking it to heart um and and when i see yeah well but see sarah i'm a baby boomer and i'm progressive yeah you just not all mend us You just all lives mattered us. Yeah. The point is not that every baby boomer is the problem. Right. The point is the baby boomer generation, on the whole, created the problems that we are trying to solve today. Now, I'll criticize my own generation, too. I'm a Gen Xer. We are the lazy pot-smoking generation that uh, listened to Nirvana and got high and we're completely no, you were knocking on doors, and we're completely <laughs> uh, disconnected from all things civic. <sighs> we 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 were just detached. But you know what we were doing? We were still enjoying some of the uh, some of the world that our that our boomer parents that was still around before it all went to shit. Right. But I think, and there's a really interesting article, and I can't find it. I've been looking for it, uh, that talks about how the the Gen X uh, generation being uniquely between the millennial and younger, and the Gen uh, the uh, baby boomers and the silent generation, where we've seen both sides of the the kind of the coin. We're yeah. seeing both both of that, and uh, and I. I'm lined up behind the the young kids. Mm-hmm. You know, again, how many how many times have I said this? At a point, you have to stop trying to create the world you want for yourself and start listening to your kids and your grandkids and make the world for them that they want to live in. Mm-hmm. If they want to live in a world where there's not a gun in every other house, then it doesn't matter what you want anymore. Right. They have more years on this earth and in this society than we do, and we should be building their world. Mm-hmm. And that's just where I'm at. Um, and so, yes, there are a lot of older people who are progressive and are fighting alongside the younger folks for the things mm-hmm. that they want. But systemically, generationally, the baby boomers created the mess. 
Mm-hmm. And that's all I'm saying. All I'm saying. Ironically, the baby boomers that created the mess are also the ones that raised their children to clean up after yourself. And now they can't do it. Pull up your bootstraps and <laughs> all of that shit came from. Uh, yeah. Uh, because that's how they were raised. But, you know, I, it's. <sighs> so there you go. There's a defense of old people. In that you should be whatever age you want to run for president. Mm-hmm. As long as your mental faculties are there. Exactly. And when I hear Bernie talk, Bernie is the same guy he was 30 years 40, ago. Yeah, 40 30, years 40 ago, years yeah. ago. He, and it's, except for he's a little more scratchy last night. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed that. And he's been yelling a lot well, lately. He's been on the trail. Yeah. So let's hit some chat for a, whip, sure. for a minute. Dan says, I lost all respect for Julian Castro after he attacked <laughs> Biden's alleged forgetting. Turns out Julian was incorrect. Julian. Whatever. Julian Castro. And then he says, doesn't change the fact that I'll still vote for the candidate with the D next to their name. Absolutely. Exactly. Agreed. Um, and then David says, as a baby boomer, I agree with your statement. And Brent is here. Yay. Hi, Brent. Brent. Yay. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's that's my, yeah. you know. Yeah. When, I, when someone criticizes Gen X, like I just did <laughs> of my own generation, when someone says some snarky thing about the lazy Gen X mm-hmm. kids, you know, uh, I go, yeah, <laughs> yes, that is the hallmark of my generation. Right. You're absolutely right. Uh, I spent my 20s and most of my 30s completely apathetic to all the world's problems, mm-hmm. to all of politics, to any civil or uh, civic right. issue. And now I know better and now I'm going to do better. Right. But you're right. That 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 marks our generation. It absolutely did. The shit you give the millennials, though, is not warranted. No. Okay. So. Um, Can't wait until we're all pissing on the, the participation trophy kids. And <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of like my era. What really? Yeah. I don't know. We I played wasn't, T-ball. Everybody gets a trophy. I wasn't involved in extracurricular activity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When we played, when I was a little, little know. kid. And that's the, see, there you go. There's a prime example. We take shit for being the participation trophy generations. Who gave us the goddamn trophies? <laughs> <laughs> Who created those trophies? <laughs> Oh my gosh! You found it. Yep. Okay, so here's as what... a as a person who had a, a particularly coddling mother, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like that. I think that maybe is that is it that what it was? Like it was just some mom yeah, got sort of the got butt hurt because her because little Timmy didn't do started. well, and all the other kids got the thing, and he wanted the thing, and <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's the. Uh... Well, you know, everybody worked hard. They ought to reward hard work. Everyone should be rewarded for working hard. Well, with our kids at school, the, the first year of school, they, everybody gets an award. It's tapered off now as you get older, but like, you know. Right. They Most improved in handwriting. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> like, right. that's an award? Yeah, what is it we got? We got uh, attendance. Yeah, oh, yeah. And that was I don't know, there. I'm sure there were other things too. Uh, Dan's question was, "What is your take on the RNC refusing to hold a primary or debates?" Eh, I don't know. I let them do whatever the fuck they want to do. I mean, I I don't know that. Um, uh, what's his name? Walsh is gonna. Uh, you know, I just I don't know. There was a, where did I see this? I can't remember where this came up, but there somebody was talking about, um, you know, like, what if Trump refuses to participate in, like, general election debates? Mm. And I don't know that we need to have general election debates. If you... I certainly know what Trump is all about. I, and I, by the yeah. time we get there, I'm going to know what presidential candidate Liz Warren is all about. 
do we need to see them on stage together? Is there a benefit to that? Like, does that, other than, like, that he gets owned over and over and over again, like, other than the sheer enjoyment and entertainment of it. But the, the <sighs> idea is that you're supposed to, um, I mean, I guess it's twofold, but the, the idea is that you're supposed to reach out to the middle voters who haven't decided or yeah. who might easily be swayed. And I don't think we're in that world anymore. I, I think don't we're think so. so divided on partisan lines that it uh, yeah. doesn't matter. Um, but then also, um, it's there's an entertainment factor, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? What if... Uh, I would. They don't have. Uh, I would be debates. interested to see like how that plays out. Um. Personally, I feel like if you're not willing to show up mm -hmm. and state your case and defend your line, then you're really not qualified hmm. to be the commander in chief. Yeah. I just I wonder what I, I I wonder what purpose it serves, and I say that because, um, just like and we'll get to uh, the uh, the revolution in ages in a minute, but we've gone from literal stump speeches where candidates have to travel the country to talk to the voters in public at the town square, mm -hmm. standing on a stump. Right. Then there was radio, mm -hmm. and now we can broadcast some of that stuff far and wide. Then we still make face, you know, put put in the FaceTime, put in the appearances, but um, but now you can listen to that stuff. Right. Uh, and then the TV happens, and, and now we're going to televise these debates. And now we're on instant media. Yeah. I mean, you can watch... Every debate since the internet, like they're yeah. all archived right. online. Mm -hmm. uh, at any time, you can go and watch yeah. and find out what these people are about. It's not like you have to be down at the community center right. on Saturday night at seven o'clock to hear what this guy has right. to say, or you'll have no idea what he what he believes in. We've and it's changed so much. I think about that, and I think, does that change voter turnout? Yeah. Because I think, okay, well, you know, back 20 years ago before you could just TiVo your debate and watch it or whatever. If you, you, you know, like, oh, you weren't home to watch God, it on the TV. Was that 20 years ago? Yeah. You weren't home to watch it on the TV. You missed it. So if you missed yeah, it, right. did you not vote because right. you didn't really? No. Or did you just on. go in and, and say, I want the D and. <laughs> <laughs> I've been uh, waiting to use that all night. <laughs> I'll be honest. That's but, the you know, uh, show title. The like, you know title. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I hope that this instant media, for all the bad that it does, will do some good in that more people have access to the information they need to make an educated vote. Sure. Right. So that's the other piece of the puzzle is... Um, trying to energize your base to get excited and come out and vote, right? That's the other sort of purpose to having these debates is is not necessarily just to reach people who haven't made up their minds yet, but also to reach the people who are supporting you um, just to make sure that they're going to come right. out and, and, you know, send you money and canvas and yeah. go vote. Like, that's another part of it. <clears throat> Uh, David is plugging the the family <laughs> on Netflix, which is uh, f chilling. I you if you haven't watched that yet, you should be watching that. Uh, it it is just scary. See, people keep saying that, and the more you tell me it's scary, the less I'm gonna want to watch. Not it. Not like creepy scary, just no, like no, I know, but I, end of our democracy scary. That's all. Yeah, I know that's the scary part of it. So uh, so here's where I'm at. This is where I'm at You're with right here. the Democratic primaries. Um, after last night, and this isn't a huge departure from, from where I was before, right? M my top picks right now, 
in no particular order. Mm-hmm. Warren, Sanders, Pete, Beto, maybe Castro. I don't believe you that that's in no particular order. No, it's in no particular order. Because, like, you already slipped in, like, President Warren earlier, and then you named her first. Well, that's the, yeah. I think you... That's the going joke <laughs> around all the podcasts, <laughs> that it's going to be President oh, Elizabeth okay. Warren. Oh, okay. All right. And, and and I guess, mo- and Castro was just like a coin toss. Like, the, my, I have a top four now. Warren Sanders, uh, Pete and Beto. Like, that's, those are the ones that are really, really speaking mm-hmm. to me. Um, I like Yang. And uh, if only for the... Like we look, we're going to have to deal with, uh, and this is the the discussion about the changing in the eras. We're coming up on a a new era, the era of automation, and we're going to see what happened to auto factories. Happen to you will not believe the number of jobs right. that we are going to automate away. Yeah. And we didn't know how to deal with it when they did it to the car manufacturers. Right. We're sure as fuck not prepared. And you know why? Because the same goddamn people are in charge. Yeah. Hi, baby boomers. Um, <laughs> the, same, <laughs> the same people who didn't know how... Okay. Anyway. Um, but we, we need to be preparing for that. Yeah. We need to be figuring that shit out. And I get it. We can't because we're not going to reach that because the planet's going to overheat. <laughs> uh, so we have more pressing matters. Um, I so understand that, but uh, I like that he is bringing attention to the fact that the workforce is going to change yeah, and that a partial solution to that is universal basic income. Yeah. We did a show, God, two years ago, Mm -hmm. must've been on UBI and there, you know, several different locations that were, uh, doing tests of UBI, um, I think his I think the the thousand dollar plan is a start. Um, I, I think once people start seeing the value in uh, that sort of redistribution or whatever, yeah, um, I, I think people will start to get it and and catch on. You know, again, like the 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 difference that you have here, um, and, and note, too, that all of these things are pulling the Democratic Party way further than, to the left than they have been in a, a long, long time. Uh, so the, the, the general principle on the right is we're going to stimulate the economy by giving a bunch of money and tax breaks to corporations. And they're going to use that to create new jobs and design new shit to build and mm-hmm. all of this stuff. And that's going to create wealth and, and, and uh, commerce and new jobs and all of this stuff. Except we know that that doesn't work. If you give billionaire CEO another million dollars, they're going to invest it. They're going to sit on that money. Mm-hmm. And yes, that does a little bit. But what's far more effective, I think, is you take that money and you give it to some poor schmuck like us. You know what I'm going to do if you give me $100,000? You know what I'm going to do if you give me $1,000? I'm going to spend every fucking penny of it because I got bills. Yeah. I'm going to put it right into the economy. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to sit on it. I, don't, I can't afford to put it in a savings account. I can't afford to invest it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I got bills. Yep. So, I don't know. I think if if someone can really demonstrate uh the that benefit. Yeah. And and people start to see it. So, I have a question. It might help. You've given us your top 4, yep. your top 5. Yep. Who are your bottom 3? I'm getting there. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I wasn't reading your notes or anything. No, actually, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I wasn't. But I, but I want to know who you absolutely don't like, but okay. would vote for. I'm anyway. getting there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
David does agree with your top four. Dan, Bernie has his repetitive talking points and is unable to have a discussion about topics other than those talking points. <laughs> You're right. I still like him. Is it because nobody takes his talking points seriously that he feels that he needs to just... That's a lot of it. ...keep beating the horse until somebody goes, oh, wait a minute, Bernie, maybe you are right. But, I mean, he's been saying since 1980... <laughs> Like he, you know, yeah, like the got the same, the exact same phrases. Yeah, and he's not wrong. The oligarchy, like, the one percent. That's the, and that's the thing it. about it. Yes, he talks about the same stuff all the time. But it's true. But it's it's, it's relevant. Yeah, it's true. And he's been trying to get these things fixed for forty years, and he hasn't been able to. But it's his passion, so mm -hmm. he's going to keep trying. Right. I mean, well, and to the point of universal basic income. Uh, what was presented last night is, you know, look, a lot of the problems that we have in our society um, are because of this disparate wealth gap that we have, this this uh, uh, extremely unequal um, arrangement of who has how much. Yeah. And, you know, nobody wants to talk in terms that sound like scary socialism, although that came up last night, too. That was good. Um, but that's what it is. It's, it's redistributing the wealth. And uh, that's a good thing. And I, I just, I if you, there's a certain point, there's got to be a certain point where you have so much money that you can possibly need another dollar. What are you going to do with that money? Right. Buy a bigger boat. Buy a bigger boat. Um, Buy a plane. And... So so I think there's, you know, he's trying to 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 go at that, you know, that big business and shut down mm -hmm. the corporations and they own our they own our country and all of that kind of stuff and he's right about that. Um if you've been following from a following him for a long time, then it sounds like, you know, a broken record. Not to borrow Biden's puns. <laughs> um, but it, yeah, and so Dan says his talking points may be true, but he tends to wrap the every conversation comes back to that. And it's the same way that that Yang does with the universal basic yeah. income. Like every every question he's had, well, what would you do to solve the the problem of race relations in right. America? Well, black people are poorer than white people, and if we right. raised that. And universal basic all income will them. get us there. And that's right, too. But yes. that's his only talking point, right. and I see what he's saying. Yeah, all of them do that. A booker right. always goes back to, I grew up in a poor... Yep, poor black I neighborhood. Mean, they are all they all do that. I, I, so, to an extent. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they obviously, you can tell who has their passions and yeah. what their points are. Yeah. Um, okay, so then, I would say... The more that I hear Joe Biden talk, the less I like him. Yeah, and that's, isn't that weird? That's been going for a while now. That's, yeah. that's been kind of the status quo for me. The, the more he talks, the less I like. I think he like peaked during the, the, uh, Obama, the Obama bro memes. Yes. No, absolutely. I, I yeah. feel like, you know, like he... In the same way that Booker says... Answers every question with, uh, you know, I, I lived in a poor black neighborhood. Biden's answer to every question is, you know, I was the vice president with Obama. Right. right. And Obama did some great things. Yeah. But and that's, you know, that's great. Obama did some great things. Mm -hmm. Where was, you know, like, oh, you were the. I, okay, so I, 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 I struggle with this because I think, OK, 20 years down the road. Right. Well, maybe hopefully. A year and a half down the road, we'll hear Mike Pence saying, "Well, uh, Trump did all these things. Yeah, it was it wasn't me, like, right?" Hand so, wave. So, um, yeah, but it's just one one of these things. Like, you have been in politics more than just those eight years you were in the White House with Obama, right? Right. So, why does it have to? I don't know. I I just feel like he's just he's plays off of that way too much. Dan says Biden admitted his performance wasn't good last night, but said he'd do better in the next one. I roll. Yeah, exactly. Uh, here's a guy who, again, like if you want to say, 
uh, someone is too old to run for office. It's not about the age. It's about the the com- the competency. And Biden's cheese is sliding off his cracker every minute. Yeah. And that's a problem for me. That look, you wanted to know my my bottom three, my absolute last, and not just in the debates, uh, this debate, but on in the field, Marianne Williamson, because she's batshit fucking crazy. Oprah's spiritual advisor believes in crystal healing and crazy bullshit anti-vax stuff like that. Uh Get that woman the fuck out of here. Yeah. One step up from that is Joe Biden. And that's where I'm at. Again, he is my Hillary. Yeah. Of 2020. If he gets the nomination, I'll go in, bite my tongue, vote for him. Right. But I don't like him. And I don't understand. I know we talk about this every week now, it feels like. I don't understand why he's still the front runner in all the fucking newspaper articles. I don't see it. All the people who run in my circles don't see it. So again, I don't know who they're polling. It ain't me. Are they is it are they polling his his contributors? Is that yeah, right. like the the more I hear Kamala <laughs> She's and Booker the less I like them. They, yeah, they're they're they're, they're walking down. that line. Uh, Kamala was not impressive last night, from what I did catch before I fell asleep. Just her tone. Yes. The yep, way that's what she... it is. It's, the the word that I don't like to use, but it's the word that everyone understands when you say it in politics. She's hawkish. Yeah. And it, I don't. I'm I'm not there for that. I don't like that. Yeah. Uh, Amy Klobuchar needs to walk away right now because she seemed like a lost little child in <laughs> in that field last night um she it just seems like she's way out of her league yeah she probably is yeah um and she you know she tried to play the whole like hey look i'm from the midwest you know real america oh, and, uh, <laughs> aren't you cute uh, from the midwest like okay g- i got it you, fly over america is the votes everyone wants right but uh to make it like I don't know. A lot of people walked away from that feeling like, oh, so you don't think the people who, you know, right. who live on the coast are yeah, don't real alienate, Americans? Don't and... alienate California. Mm. <laughs> right? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <sighs> and you will with comments like that. Yes. <sighs> um, I don't know. There was something else I was going to say about about that, but now I don't remember what it was. Yeah, I I know that hawkish applies to foreign policy, but uh, but but it's a tone too. Like there's a yeah. Uh, she just I the, I, the I, other the other word that I uh, that I have been using for it is um, prosecutorial. Well, that is right up her alley. It is. That's yes. You're not in court, honey. Like. Yeah. Soften it up a little bit, yeah. maybe is is what my problem is. Yeah, she's very she's um <sighs> Yep, she's, she's just, that. She's just harsh. Her tone is harsh. Yeah. Um and and look, I liked Kamala and and Booker from from the beginning. Yeah. I, I was fine with them. They they didn't really strike me and stand out. It, I'm I'm sorry, I'm looking for someone much more progressive. Uh, yeah. and, and I think I, I knew that and everybody else knew that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but I, I, they didn't, you know, I didn't have distaste in my mouth yeah. for them, but yeah. like, yeah, yeah, I got it. Um, so, but again, the more they talk, the less I like. Yeah. And Booker just did a, a thing about his trans. It was nephew really cool. That was beautiful. Um, but then I hear him in this debate stage, and I'm just like, "Ugh, you're not the guy I want." That's not. It's funny because a one-on-one interview, and I think they're all gonna. It'll. It's always gonna be uh-huh. this way. But you, I can in see in different environments a one-on-one interview and go, "Oh wow, that's a really that looks cool." But then on the debate stage, they just get a completely different playing field, a different vibe. Um, you they're more vulnerable. Which is, I guess, it shines a light on the the fa- the flaws that maybe you didn't see in their spotlight interview that was probably 
edited to make them look right one way or the other you know right yeah uh, but then but then there are some people who are and uh, to to some detriment uh in some cases apparently um you, when you see an interview of Bernie Sanders one on one and you see Bernie Sanders on stage in front of a million people he's the same fucking guy he really is saying the same <laughs> shit yep. like he just he knows what his his message is and he's on it right well and he also is not the type to take shit from anyone yeah like i've seen and i th- maybe that's what i like about beto yes i i love beto's no fucks given like i would love to see a beto bernie ticket yeah just because i think that beto could learn a lot from bernie and Mm -hmm. bernie could get a lot out of beto too like I, i think that that would be an interesting pairing yeah I, honestly, any of those four that I that I put in my you know, in my top list here. Any of those four uh, that are in your are, top five? Yeah, well, <laughs> and it, it was top four in a maybe. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Any combination of of yeah. that, I would be fine with. Um, I think I think Warren and Mayor Pete would be good together. Yeah. Um, I I, I love Bernie. Always <laughs> big Bernie fan. Um, but I'm I really am liking Liz Warren yeah. more and more. Um and I think I think it's her ability to sort of tie off Bernie's message. Like mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, we get it, old man. This is what we're we're yes, I'm with you there. We're gonna do it. You and I have been working together for hundreds right. of years, right? So yes, so that's what we're gonna do. But then she brings this something else to it. Well, that's I think is that a mother thing? It's a teacher thing. Ah. This country needs a school teacher yeah. in charge. Yeah. Yeah. See, I didn't think about it that way. Mm-hmm. I just thought it's a that's a motherly woman thing because women are by nature nurturers. And, but yeah, school teacher. That's a good perspective. Right? Yeah. When she gets the same questions over and over again, when somebody misunderstands her answer or challenges something that she said previously, mm. she it's the patience of a school teacher yeah. that comes out that, that I think is interesting. Yeah. Hmm. I like that. Uh, Dan, uh, glad you brought this up because I forgot to write it down. Uh, nothing in this show is planned tonight. We're just making shit up. Um, Dan says, Beto crossed the line last night into a zone where the Republicans will be using the take your guns clip too far from the middle. I loved it. Yeah. I absolutely fucking loved it. And and that kind of shit's going to split our party, and I know it. But there's also a part of me that doesn't give a fuck because we tried the go down the middle thing. Yeah, it never worked. We sat at the table and said, hey, guys, uh, no, you really like your guns, but we kind of like our kids, and so maybe <laughs> yeah. we're not gonna t- look. We're not no, we're not gonna take your guns, but maybe we could make it a little harder to buy them. Fuck no, don't take my guns. That's my guns. Second Amendment. You can't have my guns. And we were like, mm, okay, and we left. <laughs> right? and we walked away with our tail between yeah. our legs. And I'm over that. I I, I know that is not going to work. Yeah. And for someone to stand up and say. Fuck yes, I'm coming to take your guns. Not all your guns. Guns that were designed for the battlefield. I did hear that. Okay, I was trying to remember, but yes, I did fear I did hear this one. Yep. I don't think it You don't need to own an AR fifteen. You don't need to own an AK forty seven. There's yeah. If you want to shoot them, uh you can go to a range and sign in and have your licenses right. or whatever and have fun at the range. But you've no need to own one of right. those and have it in your home. No yeah. need. I don't I don't personally think that it was a I can see what you're saying Dan that people are going to yeah, be He's talking about her. electability. Yeah. Yeah. But I hate I hate that it that it will. I, I hate mm. I hate that there's going to be that section of the country that's going to go Argh! because there's a question here though. And that question is why How don't, much rum do you need? Wh- this is only my second glass. Why don't Democrats vote? Why don't we get excited about shit? And maybe that's because we play down the middle too too yeah. much. 
Sure. Maybe what we need is some of this radical left stuff to get people angry and excited and coming out. Again, this this whole idea of like talk to the children and find out what they want their world to be like. Yeah, absolutely. They don't want to get shot. We didn't have to go through active shooter training right. in schools. And they don't want to have to go through it. And as a parent of a child who was locked in a closet for two yeah. hours a few short weeks ago. Yep. I, I just I, I just wonder if this sort of um, what people would call radical left um, isn't what's needed to get the party energized. Not the middle of the road centrist people who are the ones that are the Ooh. classic. Well, the classic uh, donors, the big yeah. money donors to the Democratic Party that ride down the middle because it's safe. Right. Is this enough to get more people involved in the process who otherwise wouldn't be? Right. Because one of the things that the Republican Party does well is get people angry. Yeah. People don't vote with their wallet. That's an, that's an old saying that is not true. People don't vote with their wallet. They vote with their emotions. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sometimes that involves your finances, but most of the time it's because you got pissed off and angry about something like they're coming to take your jobs. Yeah. The brown people are coming here to take your job. Right. They're coming to take your guns. They're going to come and take your guns. Now, all of that's been a lie for a long, long, long time, but it's worked. Yeah. You get people angry, you get people scared, and they come out and vote. I'm not saying that we should do that, but I'm wondering if that's not what's happening to an extent and if it will have the positive effect of getting people out to vote. I don't know. I, I'm i not a political uh, expert here, but it's just what I'm seeing. I don't know. We have to find a way to get our people to the polls, though. Right. Because we can't do another four years of this nonsense. You're right. Um, I just, I don't want to live in a world where we elect this ass hat twice there and there's something to be said for like yeah, okay yeah things have been pretty damn bad um but you know we term limit people for a reason and this is a good reason there are people who you know go oh, we had to suffer eight years under obama and yeah, okay how did you really suffer and it, it's a little apples and oranges it's not a direct line um, there, but um, the damage, the biggest damage I think that's been done and that would be done in another four years is the judiciary. And um, I, I think all the other things can be can be flipped around, right? right? Uh, bad policy can be overturned and and, uh, and rewritten and new laws passed and uh, presidential um, uh, what the fuck? Okay, I lost it. Executive orders. Exa thank you. Executive orders can be undone. Right. Trump spent the first year undoing all of Obama's. Right. Like that kind of stuff we can do. I just justices are serving lifetime appointments. Yeah. Justices stolen from Obama. Yeah. Um, and that's the long term damage that I think that I think is going to happen. All of the other stuff, I think we can. You know, whether it's four years or eight years, he's going to leave. And I, mean, and I think we can recover from it. The longer he's there, the longer it takes us to recover. It's the judiciary that we're fucked. I, okay. But I just feel like term limits are great, right? But in eight years, oh, eight days was too much for this guy. You know? Yeah. So, but that's where I am. I'm just like, I don't want to wake up this next election right. to the same feeling that I, because, yeah. because now you've as experienced bad it. as it was right. the first time, mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm getting like physically sick right now just thinking yep. about it. So, yep. Well, here's. Here's what you do. Oh, of course he does. Oh, I'm 
Trump believes his party should change the Constitution to allow him as many oh, sure. as many terms as he wants. Yeah. Uh. Oh, all of his favorite people, uh, in North Korea and yeah. Russia and China and all, yeah. Um, like that is terrifying. It yes. How can you even claim to be an American? Like the whole like. I've I've heard so I, I I've heard that concern and then I heard, um, uh, this might have been on opening arguments a rebuttal to that which is. Uh, if Trump doesn't leave the White House after he's voted out or his terms expire, they'll move him out. And there's a good part of me that wants to believe that, whether it's, I don't know whose job that is, Secret Service or military, or somebody comes in and just grabs his fat ass and drags him out the door. Wouldn't that be like the greatest it retribution? Would. It would. But then there's also a part of me that thinks like, yeah, but all them people followed Hitler too, and didn't ask questions and just did what they were told. That's... And, and I, I and I know people are tired of the the correlations between what's happening now and Nazi Germany. But I get it. But there are so many fucking correlations. Yeah, it's really hard to. And one wonders if that day comes and Trump just goes, "I'm not leaving. I'm going to stay." This is my house now. <laughs> like, what? What Please the fuck do we do? Stop it. First of all, don't ever do that voice again. That's worse than the Alex Jones voice. <laughs> um, I, I like this house oh very much. <laughs> it's a beautiful house. It's wonderful. After he, after he complained <laughs> about how horrible the maintenance of Obama's administration didn't take care of something. <laughs> Could you imagine? Oh um, but like, <sighs> that's scary because there's so many people that are just go, yeah, Trump, yeah. Trump, Trump. Yep. To think of what would happen if he is voted out and he does throw a temper tantrum. Mm -hmm. Look, if he loses, <sighs> this is what's going to happen. If he loses in 2020, then. The Democrats voted twice. That'll be the narrative. We stole the votes. We packed the, you know. Yeah. Uh, we pulled up dead people's names. And, right. And went and voted for them. And, you know, we stole the election. That'll be the narrative. Yeah. Well, sure. Like we've stolen every other election. Um, right. Remember That's the... That's the other thing that pisses me <laughs> off, too. Like, here in Florida, this has been a, go a, a Republican-run government in this state. For as long as it's been a state. <laughs> like, it's been a long damn time since there have been Democrats in mm -hmm. power. Yeah. And people bitch and complain about the state of things here. And it's uh, it's you. <laughs> it's your people. Right. Your people. Republicans have been in charge of this uh -huh. Congress for, for the state Congress for a long, long damn time. A long time. time. And uh, if things aren't the way that you want them to yep. be, that's why. But they can't see that. <sighs> Anyway, I'm sorry. I got off on a rant. That's okay. It made me think of why I don't necessarily want Bernie to become president. Okay. I think he gets more done in the Senate. Yeah. That's true. I really do. I Like, I just that's feel like... That's my argument with most of these people who are running. Yeah. Like they're so good. Leave it to... But... Leave it to Warren Sanders, Pete, and Beto. Yeah. Maybe throw in Kamala and Booker because right. some people like them. Go fight for but your everyone else in your everyone else should be focused on flipping Senate seats. Yeah. Period. Anyway. Um. Okay. So Dan says, remember the Twenty Second Amendment is less than seventy years old. Yeah. So there's that. Right. Um, let me see. Is I had, that older than I had a couple of news. <laughs> I had a couple of news stories here that I was going to talk about too. Are we done talking about politics? I think so. I'm sick now. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so let me see. There's one or two news stories. This one's uh. This is from Tennessee. Students at Saint Edward Catholic School in Nashville can no longer check out the popular Harry Potter book series mm. from their school's library. <laughs> Let me guess. Because mm. it was written by a feminist. Reverend Dan Rehill, a pastor at the Roman Catholic Parish School, wrote in an email, 
these books present magic as both good and evil, which is not true, but in fact a clever deception. The curses and spells used in the books are actual curses and spells. Oh my god! Which, when read by a human being, risk conjuring evil spirits into the presence of the person reading the text. Okay, stop. Hold on. <laughs> Where's my Harry Potter book? <laughs> Rehill goes on to say in the email that he consulted several exorcists in the U.S. and Rome who recommended removing the books. The pastor was out of the office until Wednesday, but Rebecca Hamill, the superintendent of schools for Catholic Diocese in Nashville, confirmed the email sent about removing the books following an inquiry from a parent. Also notified faculty. I really wish I would have known that. I would have been conjuring up evil spirits and spells this whole time. Satan's in you. <laughs> Ooh. Mm. <laughs> 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 um, this is just bullshit, batshit crazy. Right? Like, seriously? This is like satanic oh, panic uh, re- reborn. I mean... Do we really still believe this nonsense in 2019? Are you kidding me? I just... I... Seriously, it's... Like, the... I don't understand... How you can be so scared of words on a page. Yeah. It's words on a page... And those words are put on that page by the same printer that printed your fake news story. Like, it's words on a... How are you... Affer- I can't. Go on. This story comes out of Utah. A former Utah church leader who's charged with child sex abuse asked the judge to let him go back to his West Jordan congregation while awaiting trial. Sean Sund, 46... Quote, held a position of trust over the victim as he was a primary teacher in their LDS branch. Therefore, the court prohibited him from attending his ward of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. However, Sun says the court orders kept him away from many of his close friends. Oh, poor baby. Oh, yeah. The order should be modified to deny any contact with potential witnesses and alleged victims and not ban him from attending church services of his choice or associating with members of the Micronesian community, as long as those conditions are observed, uh, said Soon's attun- attorney uh, in a motion filed earlier this month. Judge Douglas uh, L. Douglas Hogan de- denied Soon's request, but did not reduce his bail. Uh, but sorry, but did reduce his bail to one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. So here, here's what this guy wants to do, right? Diddled some fucking kids. Uh, and now, oh, sad me, I can't go back to church now because there's kids there. What are they going to do? Take all the kids away so you can go back to church? What the fuck do you want them to do? Well, maybe that's good for the kids. It's definitely good for the kids. <sighs> but in any case, no, I, oh. He's charged with sexual abusing uh, an eight-year-old girl he met in his ward in early 2018. Court records say he held sleepovers with children oh. from his LDS primary class, and the sexual abuse of the girl happened five separate occasions. Oh, my God. Uh, he served an LDS mission in Micronesia and attended a congregation of Micronesian members. Uh, his attorney told Two News after his arrest that the whole thing was a, quote, cultural misunderstanding. Are you what? fucking kidding me? How is... Scheduled to go to trial in January 2020. Pretty sure... That an adult sexually abusing a child here in America is the same as an adult sexually abusing a child anywhere else on the planet. <laughs> it's not a cultural. It's like. <laughs> and finally, I can't. where do you get these stories? Per, uh, the internet. Why? The internet is bad. I know. Um, this is a great story. Is it? I I just is that sarcasm? I love this story. Like in what kind of way? Like love it so much like, you want to bash your head in the wall, 
This or is, love it so like, much it gives you a good feeling. This is why... This story is a good, good example of why, like, general citizenry gun ownership is just a bad idea. Oh, okay. A pastor's wife hmm. nearly shot another pastor's wife... Oh, my Jesus ...outside God. of their West Virginia <laughs> church because of a fight uh, that escalated over one husband's T-shirt. And <laughs> and this is from uh, Hemet, <laughs> Hemet Meta over at the Friendly Atheist. <laughs> T-shirt. And with that, started a fight. Hemet says, "Someone just won West Virginia Christian Bingo." <laughs> oh my god! The incident took place in May outside of New Life Apostolic Church in Oak Hill, but only recently was Melinda Fry Tony charged with reckless endangerment for firing her gun and nearly injuring Lori Haywood. Fayette Sheriff's Detective Kevin Williams said the two ministers' spouses had tension over a minor conflict. And then an argument over a themed T-shirt that Haywood had worn to an event what was the of... straw that broke the camel's back. Probably oh a Harry God. Potter shirt. I don't oh. know. <laughs> I must not be having uh, the re- the right fights because I can't recall one that led to breaking out a weapon when my nemesis mentioned a shirt. We never actually learn what the root of this conflict is, but all uh, though all sides were quick to reject the theory that an affair was involved. Mm. Uh-huh. Hollywood told the or Haywood Hollywood. Haywood told the Register Herald on Wednesday that during the meeting she had called out what she said were dishonest statements by Tony. We had a disagreement, and when we sat down to talk, I called her out, said Haywood, and she lost it. uh, Detective Willis and Haywood both reported that the fired shot had nothing to do with romantic relationships. Okay, good. It didn't help that Tony had a permit to carry a concealed weapon, which may now be revoked, We also have no clue if they reconciled their differences, so for all we know, if one of the guys wears the wrong headband, this fight will be taken to the next level. (laughs) Maybe Jesus can be the referee, or maybe next time Tony will just turn the other cheek. I love Hemet. Hemet, Hemet's so funny. Um, But so so apparently what happened was they're uh, at the church, and they're having a little disagreement, and so uh, uh, preacher's wife A gets up and storms outside and uh, reportedly like everyone knew she was going to her car to get her gun. And then it like escalated into the parking lot and she grabbed her gun and it misfired. She didn't like intentionally shoot the other woman, but it like grabbed the gun and missed. This people don't need guns. I need a gun for self protection. No, you don't lady. No, you don't. And the world will be better off when your fucking concealed carry permits revoked. Because here's the thing. And I know I've said this before, and I know this is preaching to the choir, but you can be a responsible gun owner and have no record and buy your gun and everything's lovely and fine. But people are emotional, and people get pissed off, and things happen. And and all of a sudden you're shooting at a preacher's wife. At a different preacher's wife. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my goodness. And on that note, wow, uh, that's all I have for tonight. I do want to tell you, though, um, I did an interview for Free Thought in Florida today, which is the YouTube channel for the atheist community of Polk County. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we uh, are doing a, a series of interviews with the speakers who will be appearing at Free Flow November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd mm-hmm. at the Orlando International Airport uh, Hotel. What is it? Holiday Inn? Holiday yeah. Inn. Um, I should know all of this. Um, anyway. <laughs> yeah, Sarah, come on. Way to do your homework. Um, look, I got it all right in the interview. Yeah, I guess. Uh, so anyway, I talked to Monica Miller, um, and I, I have some other interviews coming up, but uh, here it is. But Monica is the legal director and senior counsel with the American Humanist Association. She is, uh, she was the lawyer who... Uh, stood before the United States Supreme Court and argued that this giant cross in Maryland should come down or should be transferred to private land or should be whatever. Right? Not on government not property. Not on government property. Not, Got it. not subsidized by the, the government. Um, spoiler alert, they lost that case, um, but she's going to be talking about that at Free Flow 
sort of, you know, the uh, the case and how that all went down, and then what the sort of expected implications might be mm-hmm. from that uh, from that ruling. And then I also have lined up to talk to Dr. Ryan Cragen and Gina Duncan, uh, who are also speakers. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have been following. Uh, us for a while you've you've heard Gina Duncan uh when I when we did the broadcast of um the uh transpire oh yeah when we did transpire um she gave a talk there and I don't know if this is the same talk I get the impression that it might be similar Probably um the, yeah but yeah, she's with Equality Florida and um just generally sort of you know advocates for uh, the rights of trans people and that sort of thing. And then, and this is the big fucking news. Um, Seth Andrews. <gasps> going to be interviewing Seth Andrews. What's that going to be like? Um, I don't know. I think I... You better make sure it's on the calendar so that I know to like... Be here? Here, let me see if I can change this. I love Seth Andrews. Yeah. I know you do. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yes, I can do effects on on board in the thing. I'm trying to make one happen. She's trying, but she she can. She can, but she can't. Yeah. It's a... I don't know. I don't know how this whole thing works. I haven't really figured it out yet. She hasn't had time to play with it. This is true. It's not what I meant. Well, damn it, I did it earlier completely by accident. <laughs> and now I... <laughs> <laughs> now, I wanna, now I'm want to. Now i trying to make it do things and it won't do them. Oh, wait, here we go. Here we go. Aha. <coughs> oh, my God. I got to get that mute switch turned on yeah, for do. you. Yeah, you do. Big time. There we go. Ooh. Kind of effects do you want? Is that a voice changer? No, that's a um, that's uh, reverb. Oh. What do you got? <laughs> that's a sub octave. Chorus, chorus is fun. Okay. Oh, you have to like set it up. Oh. I don't want to do that. There it is. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> okay. Do, do something different. Okay. What do you want to do? Um. Ooh, what's a dopey chamber? <laughs> <laughs> You're dirty. Okay. Uh, there you go. That's just another. Why do they all sound the same? They don't. This one has a delay. This is great radio. <laughs> Dual leader. How about a guitar amp? That'll be fun, huh? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, doesn't sound very interesting. No. Nah, I can't really hear it. How do you talk like Bon Jovi? Uh, what? The thing that when Bon Jovi does the thing where they're singing into the tube and they're... <laughs> that's what you need to figure out how to do. God, can you not hit me? <laughs> no. Damn. Oh, Russell. Me. What? He wants to know who Seth Andrews is. Oh, you're fired. <sighs> oh, pitch shifter. That should be interesting. Let's see what that does. Uh, oops, hey. Uh, I swear I thought you said bitch shifter. <laughs> no, pitch shifter. <laughs> uh, it may take some more settings or something. I don't know. Oh, you can push change. the button now for Here the bitch go. shifter, and I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> anyway, yes, there's all kinds of fun effects and stuff that we can play with. And uh, this is. Oh, here it is. Pitch shifter. Let me. Let's see. This will be fun. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Let's see what happens when I change that. Nothing. <laughs> This is lots of fun. Um, you guys are so great for tuning in, and uh, that doesn't change a damn thing. Uh, that's what it's supposed to be. Those buttons don't do anything. Yeah, uh, what are we doing here? What's a high cut, low cut? Wouldn't that be the pitch? No. That just drops off certain frequencies oh. wha- from the uh, from the final mix. Um. Anyway. Oh. 
what? Yes, they are energy efficient lights. David says we look orange. Yeah, they are. And here's a uh, here's another different compressor <laughs> setting. Oh, that you do for your. Doesn't that sound different? That does sound some kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is the kind of stuff you use for like radio imaging production stuff. We should get a different light in this room though. Maybe an LED. Yeah. A white light. I'll do that to yours. Okay. What are you doing to mine? That. I don't know what you're doing. Oh, that sounds really weird. Uh huh. <laughs> you lie, love. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Nobody's gonna listen to our show ever, ever again. Ever again. I loved Delilah. What are you no, not about? not for that. Oh. Just for us. Oh, because we're last. fucking around with them. Yeah. That's what they love us. Brent says he's just here for the cookies. What cookies? Dan says the Who bitch has cookies. The bitch shifter would make you sound like Ellie and Conway. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's so great. Oh, Dan, this is why we love you. Um, Russell says this is great content, by the way. <laughs> Are you being facetious or he's being a fuckwad. <laughs> That's what you get for not knowing who Seth Andrews is, Russell. Wow. I call you a fuckwad. Wow. Listen. Um He's my free pass. That's who he is. <laughs> That's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh so I do want to mention uh, oh, I've name dropped Seth Andrews. I should also add that uh, we also have um, Aaron Raw. Yeah. Who Russell doesn't know either. No, he won't know him. And Matt Dillahunty. I'm really excited about Matt Dillahunty too. That are all going to be there I as can't a thing. Can't wait for that. That's going to be so great. Um and and. Seth, you know, I just got to say, for a guy like that to agree to come onto our little podunk, you know, piece of shit show that, no, I mean, our podcast, nobody listens to. We've been doing this for four years. Right. Right. All 10 of you are our are, are favorite people. Um, six. I'm sorry, and, six. And I'm one of them. So <laughs> all five of you. Um, but Seth is huge. And so for for him to be like, yeah, sure, whatever, man. I I'm uh, my schedule's flexible. I'll do whatever you need me to do. That's great. What a yeah. guy. Yeah, he's a genuine dude. Yeah. So Very I'm cool. looking forward to talking to him. I don't know what I'm gonna ask him. Maybe you should. Uh, you won't be able to handle that. <laughs> Are you kidding um, me? Who was it? Uh, that, 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 who who, who yeah. was it that that I was fangirling over? I don't remember. And I couldn't even compose myself to ask a simple question. <laughs> yeah, by me. <laughs> Uh, the confessions of a teenage Jesus freak. Oh yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember his name. Jesus Tony, jerk. Tony. Tony Duchesne. Duchesne. Yep. Yeah, and like I, I, I would say I'm, I'm not even nearly as big a fan of Tony Duchesne as I am of Seth Andrews. I, I, I'll be surprised if I say anything during a Seth Andrews interview. <laughs> I'll just be like listening and and be like, wait, why did you stop talking? <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, I, I, <laughs> if you have questions for Seth, you know, let us know. I think yeah. that'd be uh, that'd be fun. Because here's could... the, here's the problem with me interviewing these people. I either know their story really well, right. or I research the shit out of it and know their story. I could totally read listener questions. Yeah. So yeah. So send in your questions. We, we, we need to. The we the should... fun thing about Monica talking to Monica today. Um, I had heard a sort of a short interview after the Bladensburg cross case. So th I knew that there was a moment that I wanted to, to get to. And she didn't even talk about that. She talked about something completely different. And it was just as amazing. Um, the moment that she didn't talk about was, so she talks about how, you know, like she's been in front of the Supreme Court before, but not, like litigating a case, not actually being, mm -hmm. you know, like, so she's, she's talking about like, you know, so uh, here's, you know, all, Ruth Bader Ginsburg and, you know, Lena Kagan and 
And the, I mean, these people, Sonia Sotomayor, they're, they're going to, they know who I am and they're going to be listening to me. And like, that's a thing. Whoa. Right. So you kind of have this moment where you just look around and it's surreal and you're just like, what is, what is going on right now? But I guess there was a, a, a moment and she didn't talk about this with me. I was hoping to get it. Um, but uh, that I heard her talk about somewhere else that she was like, and, you know, I was doing my thing and talking or whatever. And, and I looked up. And Ruth Bader Ginsburg kind of winked at me. <laughs> that's the story for the... <laughs> you can retire now. Like, that's... Mm -hmm. You lost the case, but uh, that was no fault of your own. That's because we screwed the justices mm -hmm. up. Um, but there was another story that she told uh, that, that was, you know, sort of a tie into that where um, I guess there were... Uh, the bench behind her was full of women who were... Uh, coming to be sworn in on the Supreme Court bench, uh, or the, uh, yeah, the, whatever, the uh, bar, sorry, the bar for the, the Supreme Court. And, um, and they were all, like, women, like, in uniform, maybe JAG or something. Mm -hmm. And that, like, afterwards, they all, like, lined up to shake her hand. Like, it was so, you know, meaningful to us mm -hmm. to hear a woman stand before the Supreme Court and do this oral argument. And uh, the goosebumps, just listening to her tell the story and like how that impacted her to hear from these people of how they were affected. And just that whole, uh, it was just so yeah. good. Anyway, um, I will hopefully have that uploaded either in the next half hour or uh, by morning. Uh, if you want to watch that interview so you can go like and subscribe the Atheist Community of Polk County on Facebook, or, sorry, on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> Russell's being Russell. He says Seth is probably going to listen to this episode no, he in won't. prep for being interviewed Seth by ain't you got time. and going to think you're a bit stalkerish. Well, first of all, if he listens to this episode of Sarah Talk to prep for being interviewed by the atheist community of Polk County, he, he's got other problems. Right. <sighs> and I've already met him in person. Right. If he didn't think I was stalkerish then, I don't think. I mean, we got pictures with him. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. All it's right. All good. So anyway, um, <laughs> so really cool to have Seth on. I would love to have Matt on the show. Yeah. Uh, and Aaron also, um, just because you know these are people in the in the movement mm -hmm. that um you know uh, don't have heroes, but uh, but if you do, it's Seth Andrews, and <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, but but these are guys that like. Here's the thing with with um, I talked about Seth being just this genuine guy. Um, Lucian Graves is the same way. Yeah. Matt Dillahunty, people look to him. He's he is brilliant. Arguer. Uh, it's not the word I want to use. Debater. Um, he's he is uh, a wizard when it comes to logic and and recognizing and pointing out logical fallacies mm -hmm. and arguments. But he's just a dude. Yeah. And you don't see that. The, these, you know, if you're somebody who watches the atheist experience or, or you watch the Matt Dillahunty debates, you don't see that side of him that he's just a dude. But he did talk about um, on the show once about this this birthday card that he got from his mom mm -hmm. and dad, and it was just this, you know, made it all about them and not about him. And you know, right. one day you'll come back to Jesus and all this bullshit. Um. Like, yes, this is big names in atheism, and these are prominent, well-known figures, but they go through the same bullshit with mm -hmm. religious family members and, you know, toxic right. cultures and all the same stuff that the rest of us do. They're, they're not that different. But I would love to get Matt on and talk to him, too. Yeah. Um. All right, let's wrap this thing up and uh, go to bed. So. Okay. I do want to thank our patrons. You better thank our patrons. Who, uh, who pay good money to uh, listen to us bloviate about the uh, upcoming election. Don't don't cheat. Rude. <laughs> and other things that we talk about. Um, and we want to thank uh, all of our patrons, but we want to give a special thank you to our top patrons. First of all, a big thank you to Keith for the pledge edit. Really? He uh, bumped up to the top patron tier. Hey, Keith. Thank you. We appreciate you. Keith, otherwise known as Booty Juice. 
Oh, oh my. I don't want to know about that. That sounds kind of gross. You might need to get that checked. <laughs> Declined patron Russell. Uh-huh. Uh, you're, John is catching up to you, buddy. You're going to have to uh, <laughs> update your oh, credit card information. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Thanks, Nathan. I'm homeless. Now I'm homeless. What? That's John. <laughs> and after five months, still waiting for the patron episode. Oh, my God. We, we do love you, Dan. Um, Dan. Oh. I still have the questions. Dan she sent does. a whole list of questions we she were going to do. She does. They're just... printed out. They're sitting here on the desk. Yeah. Life just got really crazy for a long time, and we're still trying to Get caught dig up. our way back to normal. Yeah. And I, yeah, mean, I mean, to be completely honest, you're lucky you get a show every week most of the God, time. I was just getting ready to go there. I was gonna say you're lucky that we're still doing the live show because there were there were, there some, were some show meetings that y'all weren't privy to yeah. where we talked about doing going back to doing this as a pre recorded thing uh, that we release every week yeah. and then maybe doing a live stream every once in a while um, mm. as a patron bonus yeah. or something. But like there was a lot of conversation about that because my days off were changing and like what do we, how, when are we gonna do this and the kids and the bedtimes and the yeah. all of the stuff and it's just there's so much life going on. Yeah. Um, Patreon.com slash Sarah Talk. <laughs> Help make uh, me quitting my job a reality. Make Sarah Talk um, great again. Oh, okay. my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That would have required it to start We already have a great with. show title. That would be a, a runner up. <laughs> um, yes. Mm. So anyway, there there you have it. That's what's a little <laughs> behind the scenes. Yeah. David says normal question mark. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. As normal as we can be. Yep. Okay. Well, uh that's it for tonight. We're going to go to bed and uh next week we'll make up some other shit to talk about. <laughs> we made it up. <laughs> I made everything up. All right. We'll see y'all. We love you. Have a good night. Bye. You've been listening to Sarah Talk. Sarah Talk is made possible by listener support. Visit patreon.com slash Sarah Talk to become a patron and help keep this program going. Contact Sarah and company by email at producer at saratalk.com or call 224-40-SARAH. That's 224-407-2724. And follow us on social media, facebook.com slash Radio and on Twitter at Radio. Sarah Talk is a production of Sarah Austin Media.